Hi, my name is Rashid Aziz, and I'm the project manager of UCI Rocket Project. I'm Mitchell Zara, I'm the chief engineer of the UCI Rocket Project. Today we're going to be going over our background of our project, uh, our goals and objectives, and the team structure and the resources that we have. So uh, our team is one of 15 collegiate rocket teams that are pursuing development of liquid propellant rocket engines. Uh, our motivation is to develop the skills necessary to succeed in the aerospace industry, and as uh, the government is moving more towards commercial crew, crew program and getting our astronauts back into uh, using our rockets, that uh, the demand for engineers are increasing. And we're, our goal is just to become one of the first, the first university team to launch a rocket into space. So our previous work, we designed this uh, system for the Friends of Amateur Rocketry Competition, competition to go 45,000 feet. Uh, we man manufactured an engine to repel a 120 pound rocket to 45,000 feet, utilizing liquid methane, liquid oxygen. And we developed a data acquisition system and support uh, structure to conduct our static fire tests. So moving into our goals and objectives for the academic year, our first one is to conduct a static test fire. Like Mitchell said, the Far Mars competition, the 45,000 feet rocket, that's our current rocket design. We made some significant changes over the course of this quarter, and we plan to conduct a static test fire in early January of 2019. So some of the objectives that we need to meet to reach this goal uh, include the finalized engine, test stand, and telemetry system. So this flowchart over here kind of outlines those key objectives as we move through. Back in uh, like 2017-2018, during the Far Mars competition, we established the parameters for each of our systems. So for example, the engine parameters, then we moved into theoretical design. After taking a step back from the Far Mars competition, we kind of looked at our design again, made some changes, and moved into simulations. We're currently manufacturing uh, both the test stand and the engine and our telemetry systems, currently in its virtual testing and UI phase. And moving, in, moving forward, once these three systems are complete, we're going to conduct some in-house tests before we go out to uh, like Lancaster and the desert kind of northeast of LA and conduct our static test fire. And from there, we're going, that's our, like our biggest learning point. We can actually test our system with an actual combustion. Moving forward, we also have the Base 11 Space Challenge. Now, the Base 11 Space Challenge is what Mitchell mentioned. We want to be the first university to launch a liquid propellant rocket into space with 100 kilometers of the Kármán line. So, over the course of the competition, this kind of gave our team a little bit more structure, uh, giving us deadlines for design reports. So the first interim update, which is not an official team submission, it's not for judging of the competition, but kind of lets the Base 11 uh, company evaluate our progress as a team and make sure we're going on the right track, business side, safety side, as well as our technical design. So to meet this interim report, this flowchart kind of outlines the initial parameters we, we, we want to hit. So for example, with the engine, it's instead of you know simulations and theoretical design, it's the altitude requirement, our dry mass propellants, what kind of cooling we're going to use. And as we move through these systems, we'll be ready to submit our interim report, get some feedback from phase 11, and use that to move into our phase one preliminary design. So this is due at the end of winter quarter in March. And phase one preliminary design is the first official submission that's for judging in the competition against the other universities, such as Purdue, UCLA, UCSD. So the phase one design requires a full rocket design, the engine with our, our cooling method, the propellants, and specific calculations, geometry, our safety, ground operations, um, and everything that would go into conducting a static test fire, essentially. And they're going to evaluate this design and give us feedback and compare it against other universities. So moving from forward from there, beyond our academic year, this is a timeline from base 11. So here we would have the phase one in 2019. Uh, the winners would be in May. Uh, we have the March is when it's due. So moving forward from there, it goes into November, March of 2020, and then continues on to December of 2021 for final launches. So it's about a three year timeline for the competition, and we hope to you know, continue with our project and keep moving forward. So. Moving into our organization and resources, our team had, follows this breakdown. We have our advisors, Professor Mark Walter and Professor Ken Mead. Um, under that, there's me as a product manager. On the technical side, we have four main sub-teams, three of which have leads. Manufacturing kind of supplements each of these sub-teams, depending on their needs, whether it be quoting prices, getting things actually made and manufactured. With these three sub-team structures, avionics propulsion, they handle essentially all the technical aspects of our, our rocket design whether it be the engine itself, the body, the data collection, and anything that we would need. On the other side of things, more management and operations, 
we have safety and ops. So safety is responsible for the all the regulations that come along with rockets. So our propellants are dangerous, uh, connecting tests in-house, location, um, training. Those are all major things that we have a safety team for because there's a lot of, we don't want to, no one, we don't want anybody getting hurt and it's highly regulated. Operations kind of handles our day-to-day, -day, make sure things behind the scenes keep moving forward, whether it be 189 submissions, timeline, budget, um, part specifications. Overall, we have 31 team members and to date, during this quarter, we have approximately 24 hours, uh, 2,400 hours um, uh, dedicated to the project. And here we have a timeline that kind of outlines our entire team. So at the top, we have 189, but our main team goals are highlighted. So what that outlines is our tech test fire, our official submission, so that would be the phase one submission, and then phase two trails off into the coming years, the coming academic years. So our tech test fire, we have scheduled for the early weeks of January and winter quarter. Um, it's highlighted in blue because as you can see, all these sub-teams, they have their smaller objectives and requirements that all cascade and land at the Titanic Test Fire. If anything were to be delayed, this simply shifts over with everything. Across the sub-team, these all line up to meet the Titanic Test Fire. Moving forward, there's also additional design to meet the phase one preliminary report. This is also, it also, we, it's important for us to connect the test fire before our phase one design because it gives us, you know, non-theoretical, you know, results. We can actually see what failed, what worked, um, and use that to uh, edit or adjust our design. We also have the feedback from the interim report to use for the phase one design. And then moving forward from there, we focus on base 11. There's a potential to conduct another static test fire depending on the, the status of the original one. Uh, but our main goal that we expect to do is, this line here is for the phase two design that kind of goes into the next academic year. Okay, so right here we have our avionics uh, requirements and our progress for up to date. And uh, currently we are testing uh, different sensors and verifying that they're compatible for our systems. Recently we uh, conducted a test on the load cell that we'll be using to measure the thrust, which is in the graph shown. And we have the actual load the, uh, the load that we measured and the difference in the three lines over there. Um, we're currently calibrating the thermal couples and load cells to measure uh, the thrust and the weight of our tanks as the propellant is flowing through our engine. And uh, we created separate VIs to take samples from three different modules. We designed and verified the standoff uh, pressure transducer, so a non cryogenic rate of tra pressure transducer. We designed this kind of standoff to allow us to use it for our cognitive system. And we tested valves and were able to uh, actuate them uh, based off of what our, our valve actuation procedures are. And we're currently developing uh, integrated test fire control system as well. So for the propulsion, this is a breakdown of our engine. So uh, currently we are in the manufacturing stage of that. We're finalizing our injector, which will be using a combination of traditional many, uh, Subtractive manufacturing and wire EDM to the manufacturer. Um, our progress uh, includes, we're verifying the combustion chamber, ignition temperatures, and we're finalizing all the simulations for the injector to move on with that manufacturing. And for our structures team, they're currently developing a test stand. We're in the manufacturing stage of that as well. And we're currently designing a manufacturing engine mount capable to withstand our 1,300 pound engine thrust, engine of 1,300 pound, 1300 pound thrust uh, for the safety factor of two. And uh, we're investigating the use of solenoid pneumatic valves in the plumbing system and designing uh, uh, plumbing procedures. So for our budget, here's our current breakdown. Uh, up to date, we have, through fall, we have spent about five, six thousand um, dollars. And this breaks down our our budget for each sub-team as well as the tests that we're going to conduct. Some of the tests that we're going to conduct um, include a cold flow test, which we, after the injector is manufactured, determines how uniform our flow is. Uh, cryogenic compatibility, we'll be using uh, liquid nitrogen to test our subsystems to make sure there's no leaking and there's no cryogenic shock, and as well as a pressurized cryogenic test. And moving forward with our budget, this is pretty much outlines our costs for the entire year. Our estimated costs, including potentially an additional static test fire. We wanted to cover all our bases. Luckily for us, as we move into base 11, 
Um, our costs significantly go down. We already have a lot of our sensor systems to, that we can use to test. Um, but our, the base 11 initial phase, uh, like the design phases, are purely theoretical. We had to submit our design simulations, geometry, ground operations, and control plans. So as you can see, in the spring quarter of each, um, each sub-team, uh, costs drop significantly, especially for avionics with sensors. Um, however, there is a potential for more tests, which is why we've allocated potential you know, costs in those quarters. Um, and that pretty much wraps it up for us. If anybody has any questions.